Hello, wonderful family. Another glorious day and another beautiful opportunity to share the word with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just out in nature and uh, blessing God and I chose to use this opportunity to share uh, with you. Praise God. Yeah. Today we'll take another look again at uh, Mark 11, 23 and 24. The bedrock or the, 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 the faith scripture itself um, if you remember if you recall up in Mark uh, 11 verse 12 from verse 12 Jesus was coming down from Bethany and was hungry and saw a fig tree in the distance so it wasn't right on the road he, he saw it in the distance and it had uh, flowers and uh, leaves and uh, he assumed that it would have fruit as he was hungry so he was not close enough to see whether it had fruit from that distance but he was close enough to notice that it had leaf, leaves so it, it was visible enough to see the leaves and the assumption was that in that part of the world whenever the fig tree leafed or blossomed it also had fruit so he crossed over over to the fig tree to see if he could get some uh, figs to eat to satisfy his hunger and unfortunately the fig tree taunted him and said some things to him in essence you ain't eating no fruit from me today i frustrate you and the bible says that he and jesus answering the fig tree said unto it no man eat fruit from thee hereafter forever that is that purpose which you were created for you missed it and so I withdraw the rights of uh, livelihood in you forever. He didn't give you the chance to say, okay, it's, there's a possibility that tomorrow it could uh, get back into function. He shut the door on that case. He didn't give the opportunity for a, a, a recourse. He shut the door on that case. So that is one lesson that when we're making proclamations, uh, let's say for over disease, we make the proclamation and shut the door on that case so that it has no, no chance of recurring. That's lesson number one. Now, uh, Peter, uh, about 24 hours after that, no, okay, no, let, let's jump back there. The Bible says, and the disciples heard him when he made that pronouncement. So it wasn't a silent pronouncement that he muttered under his lips. He said it out. And he actually put his, uh, staked his word out that if it, to show that he meant what he was saying. And um, he wasn't being mealy mouthed about it. He believed what he was saying. Because if he didn't believe it, he would have said it silently. But he said it out loud. And to show the finality of it, he didn't even think about it again. He went about his business. There were several other things he did that day. But there was nothing visibly evident to show that what he said was had any effect now the funny thing about it is that about 24 hours later whilst walking back down that same road they noticed the other disciples who heard when he made that pronouncement noticed that the fig tree had withered uh, some other uh, one other of the gospel says that it withered from its root so that's it dried up from the root so the, this was now a dead tree standing and peter was shocked and said master this fig tree that you caused see how soon it has obeyed you see how soon that cause you pronounced upon it has come into effect so it means that no not just has come into effect see how soon you've for the, the fig tree which you cursed is so soon withered away so it, it meant that from that statement that they did not actually expect anything to have happened and even if it was to have happened they didn't expect it so soon it shocked them it shocked Peter at least Peter and then Jesus used that opportunity to teach us a lesson he said have faith in God so he was saying that what he did was because he had faith in God it wasn't because of who he was but because he had faith 
in God. So he was saying anybody who has faith in God can qualify to do this same thing or this kind of thing. And then he went ahead to state out the principle. He says, whosoever, or verily I say unto you, whosoever says, or shall say unto this mountain, that is, whatever it is, say unto this thing, whatever it is, you say, just like he said, and the disciples heard him, you say in such a way that it is audible, that people could hear you too. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Definiteness of purpose. Be thou removed. And be thou cast into the sea. Another version I, I, I have, the one new man translation says, Whosoever shall say, or if you say unto this mountain, you must immediately be removed. See, they, they added a time frame into it. You must immediately be removed. And you must immediately be cast into the sea. Back to King James. And shall not doubt in his heart. So you say it with finality. Without a shadow of a doubt. That word doubt there, diacrino, actually is saying that you, should be, you shouldn't waver. There should be no judgment in your heart, or in your mind saying, oh, in your heart rather, saying, will it work? Won't it work? Should I have, should I, shouldn't I? Am I sure? Am I not sure? Will it, will it not? No. You say it with finality and you do not doubt in your heart. He says, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. Believe what? Shall believe that those things which he said, that that mountain be thou removed and cast into the sea. Shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. That is, it hasn't come to pass, but you believe that it will come to pass. My other, the uh, one human translation says, shall believe that what he is saying is already happening is happening that is you believe that as soon as you are making that pronouncement as the words are leaving your mouth the thing is already happening how is this already happening in the spirit realm spirit beings are out immediately putting it into effect so angelic beings go immediately to carry out that pronouncement says shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass or is already happening he shall have not may have he shall have so he's saying without a shadow of a doubt this thing will happen wait for it to happen don't give up on it believe that it it is happening Believe that without doubting in your heart that it is happening, he shall have whatsoever he said. So that mountain be removed and cast into the sea that you said, it will happen for you. You get my point? Jesus believed when he said, No man will eat fruit from you hereafter forever. He didn't doubt it, he believed that he believed in essence that. The agencies of God, because he believed God, will go immediately and carry out that, that, that action. So immediately, whether they saw it or not, those spirit beings went and killed that tree. Deprived it of not nourishment and fast forwarded time in his lifespan for it to crumble, for it to die. That's the same way the same beings go to carry out your pronouncements. As long as you believe, believe, believe God, that's have faith in God, that he's the one responsible for it. And you make that pronouncement audibly, not doubting in your heart, not checking, am I sure? Uh, uh, will it happen? Won't it happen? No, you say it with finality. And believe that immediately you are making that pronouncement. The thing is happening because God's responsible agents have gone to carry out the decree. You will have it. Without a shadow of a doubt, you will have it. That's what God said. Unless God has started lying. Unless he started lying, and that is an impossibility. I hope I'm communicating. God bless you. Hallelujah. You will have it.